Welcome to the Life Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson. Good to have you here. And today I get to talk to a gentleman that I've had the, the uh, privilege and pleasure, frankly, of talking to several times over the years. Uh, he's just one of those guys that if you read his books, you probably thought he's probably a really cool guy to know. Well, I'll just tell you, he's a pretty cool guy to know, and he probably hates me saying this, but that's okay. Uh, 20 years ago, a book came out called Wild at Heart. John Eldridge is the author. And it it really impacted a lot of, of men, uh, men of all ages. Uh, and, and it really spoke to some core, um, just some core issues within guys. And women appreciate it as well because, you know, men understanding who they are in Christ is, is an important thing. It's important for women too. But John has a real anointing, I think, to speak to men. Well, now we've got a whole generation uh, of men that have grown up. Um, and the, the, the book has been re-released. Here it is. This is the new re-release uh, re of Wild at Heart. And in some ways, I think there's n not a more perfect time to, to speak this message again. And so John is with me. John, so good to have you back on live today. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Good to see you again, pal. So let me ask the, just kind of the obvious question of why, why did you guys re-release this book? Yeah, um, the pandemic <clears throat> clobbered men. The la and not just the pandemic, but when we say that, you know, we mean the global crisis and the lockdowns and the economy and the politics was brutal mm -hmm. on guys, brutal on the hearts of men. And, you know, you saw it in the domestic violence was up. I'm really sad to say, and alcohol, pornography, substance abuse, but depression, suicide. I mean, guys, guys got beat up, and we wanted to bring back hope, right? And you and I have talked about this a bunch. This this book, this message has healed the lives of literally millions of guys and gals, men and women together, marriages, families. And so we're like, how can we help? How can we step in in a moment where guys are needing some, some healing, needing some strength, needing some hope and some direction and, and uh, yeah, stoked yeah. to bring it back out. Yeah, well, for, for those who uh, maybe missed it the first time or those who are, you know, were... <laughs> not even born when this book first came out. Look, hit some of the highlights, hit some of the serious points that, that spoke to so many then and have over the years that, that really they need to hear right now. Yeah, and I can tie it right into how men are doing now as well because there's a lot of anger uh, in guys in 2020 and in here in you know, 2021. <clears throat> and, and one of the reasons is this, men love to fix stuff. <laughs> We love to make things right. You know, car's broken, we want to help fix it. Relationships are broken, we want to help fix it. We, a man needs a battle to fight. And that's that's a real core part of Wild at Heart. Recovering the warrior heart, knowing who you are, knowing who you are as, as God's son, and knowing that you have what it takes, right? To enter your world, to handle your world, and to handle whatever life throws at you. But here's the problem. like. In the last 12 months, we basically told men to do the most emasculating thing we could have said. Go home and do nothing. <laughs> right? Right, right. And, and now guys are out of work. Guys are stuck at home. Now suddenly they're homeschoolers and they don't feel ready for that. And, you know, the domestic stuff and the frustration and sitting in front of, you know, like you and I are right now, Zoom and screens all day. A man needs a battle to fight, and he needs to feel like he is winning most of the battles that he's facing. And that's just super core. It's it's because of Exodus 15.3, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name, and we bear that, that image of God, you know, in our warrior hearts. And when men don't know what to fight or how to fight or if they even can make a difference. I can't fix this. I can't help. It's like, <clears throat> that's just super frustrating for guys. Sure, sure. Yeah, do you have quite a few people reach out to you over the last year? Uh, oh, man, yeah. What, what, did you, what, how did, what did you tell them? How do you fight COVID? 
Yeah. Um, that isn't your battle, mm. right? Because that was the frustration is, I mean, how do you fight this thing? How do you fight? It's global trauma, actually. How do you fight global trauma? Well, you could, you got to take on the things you can take on. Let's 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 pick the battles we can win, right? And the first battle for every guy, always, every day, is the battle for his own heart. It's it's the battle for hope. It's the battle for his perspective, and just you know, swinging our eyes back around. David in the Psalm says, "I do have this, that I will see your goodness, God, in the land of the living." Like he gets his eyes off the chaos. He turns to God and he says, no, you still have good for me. Yeah, right. In fact, in the famous Psalm 23, he says, you even have a feast for me. Here in the presence of what looks like pretty bad stuff. So fighting for our hearts, fighting for the hearts of those we love, keeping hope in our kids, keeping hope in our marriage. Like there are battles within our realm that we can make a difference in. You know, and, the, and frankly, the global stuff is God's. That's his to handle. Did you, uh, th did you find yourself fighting these battles? Oh, gosh. <laughs> like, I, I was amazed at how, because the warrior heart in me, like, I, I care for people. I really I love people. And I love the world. I, I love nature and creation. When I see the whole thing hurting and breaking down, and then you saw all the you know, the hatred getting in and, and stuff like, man, that, I, that fries me. <laughs> like that, that just cooks me. And so like, here's a beautiful word. I, I was sitting in a time of prayer and, and Jesus kind of leaned in and he said, hey, John, he said, you're not losing this battle. I'm like, okay, okay, right, 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 right. With the kingdom of God, the story of God is still the main story. And I know that everybody felt like, well, you know, not really. The main story is COVID and lockdowns and, you know, France and Italy and what's happening. And, you know, no, 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 no. The, the, the story of God is still the story of the world. And the story of God is a really good story. And, and so for me, yeah, he, he had to come from my heart, the warrior in me, because I was, you know. Oh, yeah. So 20 years later, um, is there anything that you know? I mean, obviously there, there is. <laughs> we learn things over time. What do you know now, maybe that you didn't know even when you wrote that book, that you've, you've seen come into play um, at a level that maybe, you know, you, you didn't expect or, or is, is new? Kind of what's yeah. your, what, how's your perspective shifted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote the book back in the late 90s, and then it came out in 2001, the world was in a lot of um, gender confusion. What's male, what's female, what's masculine, what's good, what's not good, what's toxic, you know, how do we find our way? We're in a world now, Randy, as you know, and you guys talk about that, um, there's just gender collapse. It's, it's, it's gender is, is um, you can't even talk about it. And, and it's, a, you know, in the public schools, it's a spectrum uh, across which human beings can live and move. And it's really heartbreaking, actually, because when young men and women right now have a lot of questions, they have a lot of questions about what it means to be a man or a woman, and if that's okay to be a man or a woman, and does God have answers for us are there things that aren't you know they kind of look back at the john wayne stuff and all that and i get that um there are answers this is the beautiful thing like god adores his sons and daughters and there's a real crisis of identity in the in the millennials and, and in the younger generations coming up there's a real crisis of identity i mean randy suicide is the number two killer of young men in our country it's the number one killer of men in the UK. And I have a lot of pals in the UK. I mean, we're in an identity crisis. And, and I guess what, when you say what I learned, when I wrote Wild at Heart, I was the warrior. <laughs> and now I'm the father. Now I'm, I'm fathering. I'm in that stage of life. And, you know, fathering 
men and women around the world, I just see the need so much for young men and women to have a father they can look to. Well, they'd look to you guys, to you and your dad for years for just some guidance, hope, direction, counsel. I think that need is greater now than, it, than it's ever been. No, no doubt about it. And, you know, you start talking about the gender issues and things like that. And people say, oh, you're getting the political. And I, I know there are people called to fight the political battles. Um, but this is so much deeper than politics. Yeah. My gosh, this is this is core. I mean, and I, I know it, it's it, it, in some ways it's gotten clearer as to what the lies are. Um, but in, at the same time, sometimes it's, it's almost harder to fight that battle because society is hostile towards you if you come out and say, no, God made you a man for a reason. Yeah. How, how, do, we, how do we do this yeah. without uh, being angry, you know, without just shouting at the darkness, but, but actually spreading some light? Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Um, it's not about politics. It's about healing human hearts. It's always been about that. Like that's Jesus's core mission and he's great at it. So Isaiah 61, right? He steps into his public ministry in the gospel of Luke and, and he reads Isaiah 61 and he says, look, here's, here's my mission. This is what I'm about. I'm here to heal your brokenness and set you free. And, and if people knew that, if people knew what the gospel offer really was i mean you, you wouldn't have an empty church in america in the world like like people would be tearing the roof off to get in it's a healing mission we're here to heal your humanity so i, I think what i would say instead of kind of coming in through the debate side what i want to ask people is um tell me your story tell me your story where, where have the wounds come in where's the messages come into your life where where did you lose heart? Let's just start there. Where, where have you lost heart? Because God is so good at the recovery of the heart for women and for men. He's all about that. He's all about healing human hearts and, and healing our humanity. So that, that's what we're about. That's what we're stoked about. And, you know, yeah, there's all the, you know, the social and the political and that kind of thing. But we kind of ignore that, to be honest. And, and we just stay focused we're dialed in to the mission, and the mission is healing people's humanity. We're talking to John Eldridge. This is the website, wildatheart.com, where you can see, see the, uh, the, new, the re-release of uh, the original classic book, Two Decades Old. That's so hard to believe, um, Wild at Heart. And, you know, it, this is a, a great book for young men especially, I, I think. A lot of us older men... Uh, we know who we are, we know, we, we know who we are in, in Christ, we know we're men, and we may not get it right all the time, but we're, we're pretty secure. One of the points, though, that you bring out that I think we, a lot of us in the church need to hear is that, that men need other men. How important is it that we not just get it settled within ourselves, but we we turn that outward and, and say, okay, this identity that, that God has placed in me that I have a firm hold on is not just for me. It's, it's for others. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Randy, again, like the last 12 months, it isolated us. You know, women are better at building relational networks and, and they're better at reaching out and connecting, but guys have those networks too. They really do. The problem was it was the gym. It was the games, you know, it was going down to the Y and shooting hoops. It was the backyard, you know, barbecues. And we lost all that or we lost big chunks of it, you know, in the last 12 months. So kind of then work, right? And then suddenly you're working from home. Men suddenly found themselves isolated. And I, I think it's real important that we reconnect, guys. So one of the cool things that's going on, we... We pulled off this amazing thing back in, in 2020. We filmed this six-part series for men, and we filmed a six-part series for women called The Wild at Heart Experience, The Captivating Experience. And they're free, and they're online at our website. 
Um, and you can come and, and connect. You can connect with us. You can connect with other men, with other women, and, and go through this six-week journey of just, I need some of my heart back. I need some strength. I need some hope. Uh, and so, yeah, we created that as a resource to, to get people out of isolation. You can join a group. You can lead a group. You can do it by yourself. You can just go through, you know, we'll trickle it out into your, your inbox every week for six weeks, and you get to take a journey with us of the recovery of more of your heart, kind of getting your heart back after a year of just uh, drubbing, clubbing. <laughs> I have, a, I have a major correction issue. It's, it's wildatheart.org. <laughs> I totally yeah. showed the wrong website. <laughs> this is what you're looking for, Wild at Heart. I was like, this doesn't look right. There's flowers. Um, so here's the Wild at Heart experience that he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know what? It's interesting that you guys decided you're going to do something big during COVID. Um, what, what I did is, you know, three of my children are married. The youngest one's about to get married. And when things blew up last year, uh, I looked at my wife and I said, let's, let's, let's do something that we can do, but that's significant. And so my wife and I and my youngest daughter, who's a real adventurer, I mean, she's, I mentioned before we started, she's about to move to Colorado and she is stoked because, <laughs> right, she, she, um, she loves, she's a photographer, so she's in heaven up there. So what we did is we... We booked a flight, we strapped a mask on, and we got on a packed flight to Las Vegas, actually, not to go to Vegas. Uh, that was just the, the closest destination because we immediately rented a SUV and we drove up to southern Utah. And, dude, we hit, uh, we hit Zion National Park, Arches, Canyonlands, uh, Grand Escalante, right? Yeah, you get all these things. Oh, we, that's killer. We spent a week... Um, finding out how out of shape we were, but hiking some of these, just the most beautiful land on earth in, in, in Utah and just spending time outside with each other. And yeah, we, you know, we ate in restaurants, we stayed in hotels, we were careful and nobody got sick, but we decided, you know what, we're going to do an adventure to remember. My daughter, of course, still talks about it and the photos were amazing. Even in lockdown or, 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 you know, restrictive times. I, I think that there's a way for men to find adventure. Yeah. And I know adventure is one of those things that, that you, you said, you know what, this, this is, this is God in, it should, can be, and should be God in the adventure. Yeah. Uh, what do you, how has that played into, you know, what you've been doing over the last year and even your lifetime. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Adventure is food for the masculine soul. Mm -hmm. Now, women love it too. Women thrive on it. But I'm telling you, you, you follow the story of men it, in, and you can see this craving for adventure. It looks different. It looks different for guys. You know, some guys, it's going out and playing 18 holes and it just nourishes them and they're outside and there's a little bit of a battle to it. And, some guys is travel. Some guys is their company. Uh, I know guys that started companies in 2020. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like that is an adventure. That is big time stuff. But here's the point, guys: is the message of the last 12, you know, 13 months has been, no, you can't. What Randy's saying is, yes, you can. What I'm saying is, yes, you can. Yeah, you you need to get the adventure back and and. Um, this is really fascinating. The human brain actually needs things to look forward to. Your, your body, your neurochemistry needs to be anticipating events. And so, uh, confession, I, I, was, um, I was not doing well in January. Colorado does have a long winter. We're all locked down inside, you know. And, and Jesus said, hey, I want you to start planning the trips you're going to take this year. Start planning some adventures. And it was almost like, I'm like, what? Okay. And so I got out, you know, I got out my journal and started writing and just hoping for it. I wasn't even doing it yet. I was just hoping for it was really, really, really encouraging. So I give that to guys. There's a real simple thing like, and gals, what are the adventures you're planning for? What are you looking forward to this year? 
you know, start, start dreaming here. Now you may not be able to get to all of it, you know, international travel is still a little bit of a mess right now, but, but I'm leaving uh, on a float trip uh, tomorrow. Oh, nice. Because I planned for it. And, and I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a couple pals and we're going to, we're going to go fish and, and float, float a river here in, in like the joy, the anticipation of it is like the, um, I just guess it's the medicine my soul needs right now because of all the disappointments of the last year, you know, a lot of canceled stuff. I needed some things I was really looking forward to. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. And you know, January in Colorado, I was, I was in Colorado in January. I was snow skiing, man. That's, that's my adventure time right there. Yeah. So I, I enjoy that up there. The hope though, that you're talking about and even just looking forward to something uh, and, and it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't, it, it can be real simple. I mean, it, it was not expensive to, to hike and buddy, let me tell you that, that occupied your time and it was joy uh, and it was yeah. tough at times, you know, uh, and it was rewarding. I mean, you know, all those things. How, how can we instill some hope into, I mean, we, we got a generation, you talk about suicide rates going up uh, and kids, you know, not having school, how do we as, as leaders, as men, help the culture regain some of that hope? Yeah. <clears throat> get them doing stuff. Yeah. So I'm serious. Get them doing stuff. Because we were already way too maxed out on technology before 2020. And, and I actually came out with a book early 2020 called Get Your Life Back, which was a lot about how to, like, get your head back out of technology, get joy back in your life. That was before we all got sent home. And then, it, and now it's just like screen time all day long, that kind of thing. So here, here's the key thing, like do fun stuff with younger people, like either it's your kids or the kids in the neighborhood or it's, it's young adults in your life, plan some cool stuff like bicycle road trips, you know, getting, getting out into the woods, different things like that flying kites, going swimming, like do real things. Because as we build a joy for the real more than for technology, um, technology really jacks with your brain. And, and if you get out in the real world, sunshine, wind, rain, all that, like it's actually very healing to our humanity, to the way God created us. So here's what a friend of mine's doing. He, he lives near the coast. So he's, he's, not, he's not a coach, he's not a count, camp counselor, he's just a dad. He said, I'm holding surf camp this summer and I'm just gonna get all the kids in my neighborhood. He's got a bunch of, you know, kind of adolescent boys in their, in their neighborhood. He's like, I'm teaching them water safety, the ocean, the joy of it and surfing. And we're just gonna do surf camp this summer. Like he is offering hope and life in, into his, his community. Yeah, it, you know, it's interesting. The technology thing, obviously, um, I've worked in the Internet since 96 uh, when I needed to explain to people what a website was. But it is great. Um, and, and, you know, we spread the gospel around the world. I'm able to talk to you right now, even though you're, right you're heading out for a trip tomorrow. But it has to be in its place. Um and, and what I hear you saying is, is that, yeah, it's fine, but we do have a generation that I think has substituted real adventure for virtual adventure, which right. is not adventure at all. Right. Yeah, and it's fascinating. So here, here's a little example of this. So people in hospitals recover faster, need less pain medication, and are released sooner if they simply have a window that looks out on the real world. Like that's how wired we are. That's how God made us. Nature heals, beauty heals. And, and in that book, Get Your Life Back, I make a big case for beauty in your life. Music and, and art and nature and get plants in your house, plant flowers this, this year, like get beauty back in your life, get nature back into your, you know, take a walk, a walk. Take, take your dog out. Like it doesn't have to be epic, I happen to love epic adventure. 
um, but it doesn't need to be epic. And as you said, it doesn't need to cost money. Like nature's free. Like, go enjoy it. Like get back in God's playground. And, and then maybe the thought would be take a few people with you. I can invite some people into life. You know, it's funny because I think a lot of men mistake art and beauty as, uh, you know, feminine things. But you're saying that it's, it's, it's essential to the masculine soul as well. Yeah, it really is. Men, men crave beauty. I mean, David in the Psalms, right? I just want to, I just want to behold the beauty that God brings, that God himself is. I just want to, I want to take it in because it nourishes, it heals, it heals trauma. We've all been through global trauma, gang. Like the, these last, you know, 12, 13 months, it's been brutal on everybody, young and old, male and female. And, and so what are you doing to heal your soul? What are the steps you're taking now for like, plan some hope, you know, plan a party, plan some adventure, let nature heal. And, and yeah, man, fill your house with beauty. I got, I got this great uh, email the other day from a, a therapist, fellow therapist in England, and she was describing the trauma. She'd been working with frontline workers in, in England all through the pandemic there. And she, she was pretty traumatized herself. And she said, I love the ocean. I can't get there right now. I just can't travel. So what she started doing was playing the sound of ocean waves in her home on her stereo. And I'm telling you, it works, gang. I, I'm like, oh, that's good. So I literally grabbed my headphones, got on Spotify, you know, found ocean waves. I just sat there for an entire evening and just let it minister to me. And it's, it's free. Like the, the ocean's free. The beauty's free. So good, man. I appreciate you taking the time. I, I know you're ready to get out, man. You're ready. You're ready to hit it. You're, you're tired of these Zoom in conversations. Oh, yeah. You're ready to get out yeah. and, and live the life. Which river are you going down? We're going to go on the green in Utah. Oh. The great trout fishery. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so cool. Man, they, well, so all you guys going, oh, I wish. Well, plan your own adventure. Come on. Feed your soul. Get out there and do it. John, anything I missed? Anything else you want to Mention, uh, let me show the correct website again, wildatheart.org. Yeah, wildatheart.org. Guys, come and sign up for the Wild at Heart experience. And, and what we'll do is we'll feed you this beautiful film series for free, some questions for reflection, and, and it, it's just going to be super nourishing. And there's a ladies' version. There's a captivating experience as well. Come, come to the website, sign up for those things, and just get a little bit more life back. Yeah, so good. So good, man. I sure appreciate you. I hope you have a great time. I really do. Thank you. Great right. to see you again. Appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to share this. Men need to hear this no matter what the age. Uh, this is just truth. It's it's nourishing for the soul. Uh, and it's, it's what God wants for us. And, and you know what? A lot of guys may not realize it, but this is what uh, the, the God-pursuing heart is all about. There is a beauty and adventure to it. Uh, and if you need to jump back to the book, it's available right now. The the re-release uh, re of Wild at Heart, a great read. If you read it 20 years ago and you haven't read it since, great time to pick it up and check it out. You guys share this. If you haven't followed or subscribed, please do it now. And we will see you next time here on Life Today Live. All we do is win for favor in my life.